My name is Anne McGovern from the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection, the sponsor of the School Green Team Environmental Club. I'm going to demonstrate how to assemble the compost bin provided by the Green Team to schools. This bin is called the New Age Composter. It's made out of recycled plastic in New Bedford, Massachusetts. While there are different composting systems you may choose to design and build at your school, this bin can be assembled in a few minutes without tools and has some features that help facilitate the composting process. It aerates the contents from the bottom, so turning is not necessary. The cover has holes that allow rain and snow to get in, which help the contents stay damp enough to decompose. It has a secure floor and cover, and the openings are smaller than a half inch, making it rodent resistant. If rodents are a concern at your school, you can make the bin rodent proof by enclosing it in half inch metal mesh. At the time you assemble your compost bin, have enough materials on hand to fill it at least halfway to keep it solid. If you set it up and leave it empty, it can blow away. Set your bin up on a level spot near a source of water and your school garden. It can be in the sun or shade, though shade is preferable. Make sure you receive the assembly kit with the compost bin. It contains instructions, clips, a handle, and stakes. The instructions are illustrated and very helpful to follow. Replacement assembly kits are available from the manufacturer, New England Plastics, if your assembly kit got misplaced. These are the fasteners, also known as togglers. To assemble the bin, you push in on the center of the toggler, push the wings together, push it through the holes in the bin, and open up the wings. This is the most difficult part of assembling the bin, so if you can do this, you can put the bin together. I like to show the students how to work the togglers and let them participate in assembling the bin. There are 25 togglers, so there are usually enough for each student to put one in. You will want to untape your bin and let the plastic uncurl. It is easiest to lay it flat in a sunny location. When it warms up, it becomes easy to manipulate. If you are setting your bin up in the winter, leave the unassembled bin indoors until you are ready to assemble it so it won't be frozen and hard to work with. There are four pieces, a long rectangular piece that will become the barrel, two circular pieces, one for the floor and one for the cover, and a U-shaped brace. Bend them backwards to help them flatten out. The bin is adjustable to four different sizes. Most schools use the largest or second to largest size, depending on how much material is to be composted and how much space is available for the compost bin. Decide which size you want to use and insert fasteners into the aligning holes from the inside out. The reason you put the togglers inside out is so that the wings won't catch the cover on its way up and down. You will form the two circular pieces into cones for the floor and cover. Overlap the holes on the circles corresponding to the size you set the barrel to, one, two, three, or four. Insert clips into the aligning holes and the overlapped holes, if any. Hold the ends of the cone with one hand and push down on the top of the cone to flatten out the slack to help the holes line up. Insert the clips from the top and reach under with your other hand to pop open the toggler wings. The cone fits snugly into the barrel, helping to deter animals from burrowing in from below. It also traps an airspace at the bottom of the pile, providing round-the-clock aeration. It also provides drainage in case of excessive rain. The U-shaped piece becomes a brace to help support the cone under the weight of hundreds of pounds of compost. Align the outer end labeled bin 24 with the hole labeled for the size you set up the bin to. For the largest size, size 1, align the outer end with the hole labeled 1. For the second size, align the other end with the hole labeled 2. Put a clip through the two aligning holes for the size of your bin. Bend the brace until it holds its circular shape. If this looks right side up to you, then put the brace upside down under the bottom cone. The angle of the brace will mirror the angle made by the cone, supporting it. You can further support the bottom cone by putting soda or detergent bottles with the caps on tightly underneath. Or if you happen to have some large round rocks in the area, place those under the bottom cone to give it even more support. The bins come with stakes if you wish to stake the bin to the ground. 
Align the holes in the barrel with the holes in the cone and insert the stake through both. That way you can secure the barrel and the floor to the ground. The other circle forms a cone that will be the cover. Assemble it the same way you assembled the floor, but insert the handle into the center hole before you put in the togglers. Take the nylon rope, fold it in half, and tie an overhand knot in the ends. Pull it tight and the loop is now your handle. Insert it into the center hole of the cover, then put the clips into the holes as you did for the floor. The cover slides inside the bin, sitting on top of the material inside. That is why the toggler wings should be on the outside of the barrel, so they won't catch the cover as you lift it. If the cover is difficult to pull out, it is because it forms a vacuum with the barrel. Just tilt the cover to break the vacuum and the cover comes out easily. Depending on what you will be composting and where your bin is located, you may need to make the bin rodent proof. To rodent proof the bin, you will need to get enough half inch mesh hardware cloth to line the floor, sides and top of the bin. For heavy duty use, you may want to use stainless steel nuts and bolts and washers to fasten the bin together. Using stainless steel hardware shouldn't rust so you will be able to remove them later as needed. Your bin is now ready to use.